Give it our praise to God and unto our pastor, Dr. Shelby Tate Sr., and to our First Lady, Sister Doris Tate, and the uh, members of Rosia Missionary Baptist Church, and all of God's children. We thank God for yet another opportunity to be in the house of prayer, and at the same time be able to be in a position to share with us another great lesson in which the Lord has given us. And at the same time, we are still dealing with the word love and the different variations in which the Lord was using with his disciples and letting them know that love had many aspects and has many varieties and everything as to how love can apply and specifically how he wants these different elements and the different references of love uh, to be, be practiced and preached by the disciples once he had gone back to the Father. And last week we dealt with a servant love. We found that out we came from the book of John, in which we're in the book of John also this week, uh, how the Lord instit instituted a, uh, a uh, technique with his disciples uh, concerning the washing of feet. And we found that uh, the Lord was able to get the point home as to how we as Christians must be very humble people and we must have a, a spirit of humility and love and be willing to uh, do what is necessary uh, to be able to help and reach out to our brothers and sisters irregardless of what uh, uh, the situation is, no matter how, how unpleasant or how uh, negative we may find it to be that uh, the souls and, and the uh, life of our brothers and sisters are the high mark in which we will be working at and that we must know and learn that the business in which the Lord has left in our hand is the people's business and that uh, it's our job to do as he said many years ago when he sought his disciples that he wanted to make them fishermen of men and that we are today uh, are carrying on that same uh, uh, practice but at the same time we're looking at another one of the tools that the Lord wants to use and that dealing with love but today we're dealing with a abiding love and someone might look at that what does that word abiding mean it means to be able to uh, continue or it, it means to remain so anyway that the love that God is supposed to be shared abroad in, shared abroad in our heart it should always be there. It should be able to continue. And as that love remains, God is able to abide with us. And therefore, we stay in connection with him and the things that he wants us to learn, to know, to feel, and at the same time be able to pass on to our brother and our sister. Uh, but before we get into our lesson, we're going to have a word of scripture, and then we'll come back with a prayer and then we will go a little bit further. All right, the scripture we'll be coming from today, we'll be coming from the 14th chapter of John and begin reading at the 23rd verse. Jesus answered and said unto them, if a man love me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sin, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the comfort of which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Uh, whatsoever I have said unto you. May the Lord have blessed to the reading, to the hearers, and the doers of his word. And he bow ahead for a moment of prayer. The Master in heaven, once again, we come before thy presence. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for our life, our health, and our strength, and for things being well with us as they are. We pray to Father that we prepare to go into the study and discussion of your word. We pray. And Father, that you lend the visitation in your Holy Spirit, where it might be able to help us and guide us into all truth. 
But not only that, if uh, we pray that as we look at this lesson, we use this lesson as a mirror before our face, whereby we may be able to get a better look at ourselves and be able to look at how we are falling short and come away with a, a better desire to do a little bit better on tomorrow than we did on yesterday. We pray to Father that you continue to look at the sick and afflicted around Atlantic country. I pray to Father that you look at those that are members of Rose Hill, that you bless and, and keep them and be able to heal and, and direct them as they walk this Christian journey in patience. But not only Rose Hill, but all church those that stand opening your name. And at the same time, all our brothers and sisters across the land and country. We pray also to Father that you are bless Rose Hill in a special way. You know what we need better than we know what I ask. So I pray to Father that you sit high and, and that you look low. I pray to Father that you look beyond our faults and that you see our every need. As always, the Father, we ask you to continue to look upon our pastor, encourage him, strengthen him, give him the power to be able to preach an uncompromising gospel where some lost man, woman, boy, or girl may come with a willing and desire to be saved. Look at his companion, walk by his side daily. As always, the Father, we continue to pray for her. We pray to Father for her strength. Ask the Father that you give her a mind to keep on keeping on as she walks this Christian journey with patience. Again, the Father, we have a special blessing for Rose Hill, but not on Rose Hill, but all church those that stand and open in your name, preaching an uncompromising, uncompromising gospel. And then the Father, when we do all we can do on the side of life, you say, well done. Give our weary souls a resting place somewhere in your kingdom where we can praise your name throughout eternity. These are no blessings. We ask in our Son named Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, looking at our lesson today and abiding love. As we look at our scripture today, our scripture is coming from a devotion reading in Psalm 80, uh, Division of Psalm, 7 through the 19th verse, background scripture, John 15, uh, uh, 4 through the 17th verse. Now, a printed text reads the same. And we'll begin with our printed text, and it reads as follows Abide in me, and I in you. As the branches cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides to me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. He in my Father, he in is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandment, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. You are my friend, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, 
And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that you love one another. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearer, and the doer of his word. Again, as we look at our lesson, abiding love. As a child of God, we want God to be able to uh, continue to be there for us. But in order for that to happen, we must be able to uh, abide with Him. And the way that we abide with Him is to be obedient unto His will and at the same time show our love for Him in which obedience is the basis of our love and it is the basis of our sacrifice. Alright? Our theme for the court is, is, less, is love for one another. And our unit theme is God is love among believers. Our lesson aim, as participating in this lesson, each learner will be able to, number one, define how the vine branches metaphor describes our relationship to Christ. Two, connect love and obedience as complementary elements in the Christian life. Three, identify ways to abide in Christ more faithfully. We have two outlines. Our first outline, divine and the branches, John 15, 4 through 8. A, connected and fruitful. We have a footnote there, grounded in prayer. Uh, B, severed or withered. And our second outline, the Lord and his friends. John 15, 9 through 17, A, loving, joyful obedience. B, great sacrificial love. C, chosen messenger. And we have the final footnote, Jesus is a true friend. All right? As we go into our lesson, uh, our in introduction spoke about wired for relationship. We are the human being. We live in nowadays what is called a technological society. Everything is at the push of a button. Anything that we want to find out, we press the button. Any person that we want to see, we press the button. Anyone that we want to hear, we press the button. So we find that we are well connected and the world as a whole has become smaller because there's no place on the planet that through technology that we cannot reach. And so therefore, in the technological sense, we are well connected. But we ask ourselves the question, what is it that we are well connected to? Are we, we can say, well, I'm connected to my friends. I'm connected to my Facebook. I'm connected with Twitter. Uh, uh, all these different uh, elements which technology have made it possible, we are all connected. But the connection that man is suffering from is a connection with God. And we know that the scripture teaches us that in order to, for us to be able to know what, when, where, and how to do anything, uh, we got to have God in our life. And so therefore, no matter what connection that we may feel that we have now, that we got to be able to have that connection with God. Now, someone said, well, why is that important? That is very important because when we are connected to God, uh, God tells us uh, how he wants his disciples to behave and how he wants them to work. And he uses in our lesson today a metaphor that's, that he uses the uh, divine to give a description as to how uh, 
man and God is supposed to work together. And he uses this in a sense to show as to how a vine dresser were able to dress vines to make it produce more grapes or more fruit. And uh, Jesus would always use something to teach that was common to the people that were hearing him. And so therefore these examples that he was giving helped them better understand what it was that he was trying to get across. So in today's lesson, the vine and the branches is the technique in which he's using to, to dramatize uh, God and his relationship and, and how heaven sees uh, what a true disciple is supposed to be. All right? And it, and it starts out by saying, connected and fruitful. It says, abide in me and I in you, and the branches cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. See, he is letting it be known that, that if we look at the, the vine and the branch scenario right here, he is the vine. He is the true vine. And so therefore we are disciples, we are the branches. And, and as the vine dresser uh, works with the vine to make sure that it produces fruit or grapes every year, uh, this is the same technique the Lord say that God is using in dealing with his disciples. And everything operates from the heart. And then as God looks at us and he deals with us, he is looking at the heart and what's in the heart. And we might describe that as the full contents of the heart. And they say, out of the heart flows the issues of life. So therefore, as we look at the divine example here, Christ had indicated that uh, in order for you to bear fruit, you got to you got to abide in Him. In other words, you got to continue or remain in Him in order for you to produce. So therefore, you have to have a connection with Him and a connection with the Father. But you cannot connect with the Father unless you connect with Jesus Christ. And so therefore, as, as the Lord has said many times, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So therefore, we got to make that connection with him, and then he makes the connection with the Father. Now, as we continue on, he said, I am divine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So, uh, Lord state very plainly that uh, if you don't have him in your life, you cannot produce the kind of fruit that God wants you to produce. You see, because uh, without me, because I am the vine, the life that is necessary for you to be able to, to do and produce comes from the vine, or it comes from me. And so without me, or if you're not connected to the vine, there's no way you can bring forth the fruit that God is expecting. Now, what happens if I if uh, I'm one of the branches on the vine, but I'm not bringing forth any fruit. And person, what does that mean? That means that you as a child of God, the Lord has instructed his disciple in Matthew in the, uh, I think the 21st uh, chapter, when he left, he left the Great Commission. He told us to go into all the world to teach, to preach, and to baptize in the name of Jesus. And he said, Lo, I will be with you until the end of the world. Now, now, we know what our Christian duty is. We know what our Christian responsibility is. We know what our direction uh, we have been given by the Lord in the Great Commission if we are disciples. So, so therefore, if we're doing what he asked us to do, that means that we first of all are being obedient. And therefore, if we're being obedient, therefore, I mean, that puts us in good stead with the Lord himself. Now, someone say, uh, uh, if I'm not doing what he asked me to do, what does that say? That says, first of all, that 
You either don't know, or you're ignorant of the fact of what you're supposed to do, or you don't love him. And well, someone said, well, no, you can't say I don't love him. Well, that's it. There's no excuse for not knowing. Now the, now the word, this book right here, it's been here well over 2,000 years. Now, it's been here since mankind, been here since the Lord had left him going back to glory. So therefore, there have been teachers, there have been preachers, there have been evangelists, and the word has been shared all over the world. Now if you don't know, it's because you have cho chosen not to know. There is no excuse. The scripture said that that was a time that God winked at ignorance, but no more. So, so the Lord is saying right here, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen if you're not producing. He said, you're going to be severed from the vine. And the example he gave is when they're dressing the vine to make sure that everything grows, any dead branch to leave on, on it, they are cut off. They're cleared off to make sure that what's there is able to use the nutrients and, and whatever it takes to grow the plant to be able to produce more. So they love get rid of that part that don't produce. So if you're not producing, you're not, you're not in the will of the Lord. Now I say, as, as he tells the disciple that we also be loving, joyful, and obedient people, and as he is, as he was obedient to the Father, we must also be obedient to him. And we, we ought to do likewise. Then he said, when we do this, he said, herein my Father, uh, herein is my Father glorified that you bear, bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Now, if you if you call yourself one of the Lord's disciples, you got to be bearing some fruit. Now, if you're willing, not willing to work, and you're not trying to abide or remain in the vine, you will not produce any kind of fruit. And a, a person said, well, who said that I can, who said that I'm not bearing fruit? When you love someone, or you love something, you will do something for it. You will make the sacrifice that, that is required when love is present. So therefore, the Lord said, if you keep my commandment, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abided in his love. So he, he made it plain. So if you're not keeping his commandment, you're not abiding in his love. And so, so therefore, uh, it said, These things that have I spoken unto you, that you might, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Now the person said, Well, uh, how do I feel about all of this? That, 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 that depends on what type of sacrificial spirit do you have. Now, do you, do you, you go to church? Do you, you serve your brothers and sisters, do you help in the community, do you do that with joy? Now, uh, do you do it with, a, with an obligation? Do you feel a burden that you got to go through these motions, you got to do these different things? And, it, and therefore, there's no joy in that. Anytime anyone does anything that they feel that they have to do, not because they want to do, it makes it hard. But if the true love that Jesus Christ is speaking about in the lesson today, and he, he being the vine, if you are in the vine, if you are abiding in, in the vine, you get a joy out of helping those less fortunate than yourself. You get a joy out of making sure that you are able to put someone in a position to have something when they don't have anything. You get a joy out of making sure that even if you don't have it to give, you can, you, you can bring or uh, relate those people to someone who can help them. But the, but the main thought is that you'll recognize the fact that I'm, I'm abiding in, in every way that I can, and the Lord knows our heart. He knows what we're doing, He knows what we're not doing. So we can talk a good game and say this and that. He knows exactly what our heart is. Now, 
It's a, a great sacrificial love. He said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I love you. Now, now, here's the thing. Yes, if you ask the question in church, a lot of people say, I love my brothers and my sisters. I love the folks in my community. And I, and, and I, and, but people will, will say this to you too. Is a don't watch what they say, watch what they do. Now, what your walk and your talk got to match. You got to be able to uh, show, like the pastor was saying earlier, you got to be able to show love, not just talk love. And, and, and the world, the world knows that talk is cheap. Anybody can talk. But it, you show me something. And when you show the world who God is, ain't but one way you can do it. By action. Now, if I'm going to be a loving person, and if God is a loving God, I got to be able to let the world know that He is in me. As the Lord say, if you abide in me, and I abide in you, and we abide in the Father, God's perfect love will work. Now, but we got to have, with that word we used from the beginning, we got to have that word connection. Now, now, the law was very good, and he let it be known. He said, greater love hath no man than this, that, he, that a man may lay down his life for his friend. A lot of people will tell you now they uh, inside and outside the church. But I don't know about that one. He said, I do what I can to help out a person this and that, but that laying down my life for him, uh, I don't know about that. He said, I might do it if it comes down to uh, my, my family, my children, uh, I might do it. Uh, but uh, that laying down my light, I, I don't know about that one and everything. But you can only reach that point if, if, the, if the Lord is full in your heart and obeying Him is, is the main criteria that you're working toward and pleasing Him. Uh, if you practice it long enough, you can get to the point whereby you don't worry about your life no more. And that, that it is His will, it is what He wants to do, and pleasing Him. Because as you do what He wants you to do, the Lord said, I never will call you to lose behind doing what is right. And then if I prepare to close out, it said that uh, the love that the Lord is speaking about here is an unselfish love. And that, that you can't be thinking about yourself. Everything you do, everything that you offer is in the behalf of the interest of somebody else. And when you do that, the Lord said that you are truly one of my disciples. And I, I close and say this here. The Lord said that uh, you, didn't, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And what did I choose you to do? For you to be one of my messengers. And so therefore, you are not as a slave. You are a servant. See, because a slave, he knows not what his master is doing or what his master wants him to do, except being told. Now, as a messenger, you're part, you're part of the plan. You are part of the blessing that the Lord wants to use your life for in this world. So, in my conclusion, abiding, obeying, and loving, these are the central elements of discipleship. Now, if all of these are working in your life, you are able to cross all the T's and dot all the I's, you are one of God's disciples, and He is abiding in you, and you abide in Him. Thank you. May the Lord have a blessing to reading of His Word, and we hope that we got something from my lesson today and to carry us on for another week. Thank you.